Human Developers, it's Kate. I am here to tell you about the wonderful experience I had volunteering at the Urban Peak Shelter for Youth. It is a licensed uh, shelter for youths experiencing homelessness uh, between the ages of 15 and 20. Um, they have about 20 to 30 beds and they are open 365 days a year. Uh, they provide a um, safe place to be during the day and then a safe place to sleep at night and then they also provide meals. Um, as, as part of staying at the facility, you have a case plan and you have um, chores or different uh, responsibilities um, within the shelter to things like cleaning or cooking or things like laundry, things like that, just to help keep the shelter running and also to um, just have that sense of responsibility as well, like they might have at home. Um, one of the things that I learned while talking with the volunteer coordinator is that the most important thing that Urban Peak tries to provide to the uh, youth experiencing homelessness who stay there is um, safety, a safe place. Because um, according to the volunteer coordinator, if they are at the shelter, it's probably because home wasn't a very safe place. And so the biggest thing is um, getting these homeless youth into a longer term uh, setting where they are safe, where they can, you know, uh, finish school, go to school, um, find a job, you know, gain self-sufficiency and independence. Um, so based on your age, there there is a limit for how long you can stay there. If you're between the ages of 15 and 17, there is a 21-day limit where you, according to your case plan, are working toward um, either reunification with family or uh, another alternative safe um, living situation. And then for use between the ages of 18 to 20, um, there is no set limit. Uh, I talked to a few people who had been there for a couple weeks. I talked to a few people who had been there for a few months. And the idea is that you are working towards self-sufficiency, um, getting a job, finding a stable place to live, or uh, finishing school, applying to college, you know, things like that. Um, so it was a great opportunity for me. I really enjoyed it. I had not had much experience at all working with homeless youth or having any interaction with homeless youth. Um, that's not an experience that I had um, growing up and uh, just not something I've, I've had much interaction with uh, as an adult either. So. It was really wonderful um, to get a sense of what these uh, young people are, are, are going through. Um, it was a, yeah, it was just, I'll, I'll tell you all about it, but it was great. Um, so what I was doing was serving breakfast, and so that gave me the opportunity to talk to a few different people. Um, everyone was so friendly and so... Uh, so uh, grateful and um, pretty quiet too. I don't know if that's because it was like early in the morning and they hadn't eaten yet. Um, some of them livened up a little bit after they got some food in them and some of them just ate really quick and then went on to the next thing in their day. So, um, but you know, just the interactions that I had were, were wonderful um, and really meaningful. So uh, as I was, Doing the volunteering process, I I was trying to think about the different you know developmental theories and like what these youths are going through, and I thought about Eric Erickson and the stages of uh, psychosocial development. And these kids, um, youths, excuse me, are either, according to Eric Erickson's theory. Um, adolescents or young adults, and if they're an adolescent between the ages of 15 to 18, they are working through the crisis of identity versus role confusion. So who am I in the world? Um, where do I belong? How do I belong? 
uh, things like that. And then the young adults, 18 to 20, are working through um, intimacy versus isolation. So trying to form a long-term lasting committed relationships with other people um, to avoid loneliness essentially and both of these endeavors um, finding your identity and forming long-term safe relationships are super important to feeling stable and happy in adulthood um, but i had to consider the conditions under which these young people were engaging with these crises of identity versus role confusion and intimacy versus isolation. And that brought me to Yuri Broffenbrenner's ecological model of human development, um, which as we know looks at not only the individual but the various levels of systems that impact an individual's development, so their ecological environmental setting, basically. So in the very center of that model is the individual, so the person, their identities, um, and everything that's going on within them, according to Eric Erickson's theory. Um, encompassing that is the microsystem, so that's all of the systems, people that they have constant personal interaction with. So that could be their school, uh, teachers, caseworker, social worker, family, shelter workers, friends, employers, coworkers, things like that. Um, the level right above that, the mesosystem, is all of the interactions between those systems and the microsystems, the different systems, and how they interact. So how they interact affects you in a way. So how your uh, caseworker interacts with your family or how your teacher interacts with your school social worker, things like that. Um, all those relationships affect the individual in some way. Um, the next level, the exosystem, are all the systems outside of what you might personally interact with but have an effect on your life anyway. So that could include law enforcement, um, other social services, neighbors, extended family, and even media. Um, level four, the macro system. It's all the customs, laws, values of a person's culture. And level five, the chronic system, is all the lifetime events and history and social historical things that have happened that have led to who you are and where you are right now. Um, what came up for me as I was thinking about kind of the interaction between Erickson's model and Broffenbrenner's model was the difference between the type of individual and the typical life of the individual that Erickson and Broffenbrenner probably used as a model for their theories um, and how that individual probably didn't look much like the individuals I had the opportunity to serve at the shelter, especially for Erickson's theory. There is a very distinct level of privilege that comes with being able to work through these developmental crises and it requires time and energy and resources and a certain level of stability and safety um, that the, these kids don't have because they're growing up so fast and they're, they're having to take on all these other responsibilities that uh, you might think a, a typical 15 to 20 year old isn't taking on yet. Um, in terms of my own development, I, I really gained an understanding of how important it is to look at um, different theories together to get a sense of what's going on with individuals and their development. Um, because while individual development is super important, uh, none of it takes place outside of the larger context of a person's life. So professionally, it served as a reminder that these theories are really guidelines, and especially the ones like Erickson's that associate ages with stages of development. Um, I saw a lot of kids that were forced into adulthood, even though their ages didn't correspond with you know, what we think of as a typical adult. So the experience in general was wonderful. It really left me full um, and, you know, kind of gave me an, an enthusiasm for working with youth and um, working with young adults. And I am excited to see how everyone else's volunteering experiences went. And that's all. Thanks very much.